What's up everybody? On this episode of Roscoe's Reef, we're going to go into a, a, a little problem I had with my skimmer. Uh, the day after my last video, um, my, I woke up in the morning and found my skimmer making a strange noise and not bubbling at all. So this video is going to show you what I went through um, to clean it out and check the pump and get it back working. So let's get to it. Okay, so here I am underneath the uh, stand and I'm looking at the skimmer and um, this is after the breakdown and the first thing I have to do to get it out from underneath my tank is remove the waste collection cup. Um, you notice I'm wearing gloves because whenever I work around the skimmer especially, I don't like touching this gunk with my bare hands. Now, um, just to get into... Um, a little preventative maintenance on this and, and also preventative measures that you can take. Uh, one thing I do not, I usually double up everything that I have, double return pumps, double wave makers, the whole nine yards. The only pump that I do not double up on is this protein skimmer, which uh, after going through this experience, I will be getting a backup for this. So now after I remove the lid of the cup, uh, I'm going to remove the cup itself and then go through pulling the skimmer itself out so I can take a closer look at it and being very careful not to spill any of the waste in this cup while I do it. So now with the um, skimmer cup removed, I'm going to be pulling this out. You can see uh, the way I've designed my stand is I can easily pull the pump, the uh, protein skimmer up, remove the um, pipe that controls flow into the skimmer and uh, after removing the water that's in the bottom of the skimmer it comes out pretty easy. Um, this was one thing that I was concerned with when I put the 40 breeder in but even with the larger tank the skimmer itself comes out really really nice and smooth. Now into the kitchen area these are the tools that I put together to help me uh, take apart my skimmer. Um, it's just a collection of tools nothing really specific the bottle brush and the toothbrush are pretty much the biggest help. Now here you can see that the skimmer over the course of the last couple of months has built up quite a layer of grime on it. You need to regularly clean this up so this way uh, your skimmer um, operates at you know peak performance. So the first thing I wanted to do when I did this is A give the skimmer a full cleaning so this way I didn't have to worry about it for another two or three months and also be able to um, get it open so this way I can take a look at the pump. Now right here you're going to see this is the area where the toothbrush comes in handy. These little holes on top uh, of the uh, cover to the collection cup and also there's little grooves where the lettering is comes in real handy because um, you know the toothbrush comes in handy because they can get into these areas and clean it out really well. And there it is the result of cleaning it out. Now moving along to the collection cup itself, um, this is a, a, I do a couple of different things with my collection cup. One is I'm going to clean it internally, but also I clean out my, uh, the hose that connects to my waste uh, jar. Uh, you can see after this also after about two or three months of not being clean, does build up a nice big layer of gunk in it. And SCA really did a, uh, a good job when they increased the size of this cup because it does fit a lot more uh, skim made in it than the old one did. Okay, so here is the extra step that I take when I do this. Um, I have an adapter on my faucet from my RODI filter from DRS. And after I clean out these rings on the bottom, I put connect the hose to the little um, part that comes out and connects to the RODI hose. Now what I'll do is I'll turn you got to really hold the hose down, uh, pinch it to this little tip because otherwise it'll fly off. But you can see, once you do that, the water streams through the hose and out the bottom of the cup. 
Now in areas where algae's built up or stains are in there, I'll just pinch the hose a little bit and that'll usually force the, the pressure of the water to clean that area out really good. Make sure you turn the water back on so it's coming out of the bottom of the faucet because I have done that and have soaked uh, the entire countertop of my uh, counter near my oven. So now you can see that that's done. Now uh, I'll just put the stop in and move on to the next step. Now, getting out the skimmer body, um, the skimmer body itself is pretty clean. As you see, I removed this. This is the adapter for the pipe that controls the level of the bubbles. And here is the intake to the pump. Um, again, this removes really easy. There are skimmers that do uh, go over the pump a lot easier, but um, I can deal with the screw on type. You can also see on the bottom of the plate of the skimmer, that is a bunch of starfish that came out with the skimmer. Um, all these parts are cleaned and cleaned thoroughly. Um, since it's out of the tank, I might as well do it um, and make sure that when the skimmer goes back in, it's totally clean and ready to go. Okay, with those two parts cleaned and, and good, now it's time to get at the pump itself. There's four screws on the SCA302 that uh, come off. Uh, I use sometimes a wrench uh, that fits really well, but I also found uh, since I am a, a, you know, a security guy and work with voltage, my strippers do really well. And this is an old pair that I have, uh, so I can use that and we're not worried about getting rusty. I get them loose so I can take them off by hand. And after the four are taken off, the body of the skimmer will just be very easy just to pull up and over the pump as you can see right here now that i get cleaned out as well but uh, i want to get into what i did on the pump um, this is the bubble plate and again it's held on by this uh, it's tightened on by the uh, top part of the pump but also this long gray screw uh, keeps it in place uh, while it's in use now I have a, another video, basically I have two, I have two videos that detail uh, this skimmer in full and if you want and to take a look at those and what my opinion is on it, um, they'll be linked in the description down below. They are earlier videos, so the quality is not uh, as good as it is now with me getting used to this whole YouTube stuff, but um, it is there for your reference. Now there's the sliding the pump off the, pu off the plate and there's more brittle stars my tank is infested with brittle stars and i don't mind it because they do do a good job but the ones that come out with the pump are not going back in the tank now um this this is the atman 2500 um skimmer pump and there's a locking ring that goes over this outer housing. And again, I'm gonna to have to get in here with the wire strippers and pop this off like that. And I give this a cleaning. And now my first step is now I'm gonna pull out the needle wheel and I'm looking at a few things here. First of all, uh, once I pop the shaft out, the ceramic shaft, I'm going to be feeling it and looking at it for any cracks or bends that it may have, uh, which it didn't. Um, I was happy about that because that was the first thing that I was uh, suspicious of that maybe it might have cracked or the, or the uh, shaft uh, had broken off completely. Now, when I'm looking at the main body of the needle wheel, what I'm looking for here is I'm feeling the magnet for any grooves or impressions that may have been left, how free the, the top of the head is because um, that would indicate that the pump is completely shot. I'm cleaning it out by hand here, making sure to take great, uh, pay great attention to how this is cleaned out and uh, make sure any debris that could be inside this pump and stopping it from working is totally gone. Okay, so now what I've done is I've, um, I'm putting the pump back together. I filled the sink up about halfway with water because I am going to test this to see if the pump is going to be working. Um, after it's cleaned, it should turn right back on. 
So that's what I'm doing here is putting it back together uh, in preparation for its test. Now you may also notice on the outer housing of the pump there is some uh, white dots. That's calcium buildup from being in, in the system. Um, as long as it's not impeding with the wheel or anything, I'm not really concerned about that. Now you can see here it did kick right on, but I will tell you um, when I first turned it on, it did nothing. But once the pump touched a little bit of air, it kicked right on. I'll be looking a lot further into this and see what that could indicate. But also, mind you, I'm also going to be getting another pump. So this way I do have a backup. And probably what will happen is I'll have to wind up buying two more pumps because this one will be uh, gone. Now you can see here how I am getting flow through the bubble plate. And now it's ready to get put back into the skimmer and to put the skimmer back online. And finally, here it is, the end product. Skimmer's back in the, in the sump. It's all clean and working like it was working before. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed that. And if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment down below. And until next time, this is Scott, and I'll see you around the reef tank. Thank you for watching this episode of Roscoe's Reef with Scott. As always, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe.